All right, candidates, let's go. I'm going to do my best here to run through these multiple choice questions. Uh, full disclosure, I do have a cat sitting on my shoulder at the moment. So if I uh, cut out randomly, it's probably because a cat is jumping from my shoulder up to the ground, but we're going to manage, right? So in an integrated audit of a non-issuer, if an auditor concludes that a material weakness exists as of the date specified in management's assertion, what should the auditor do? All right, keywords here, material weakness, and generally speaking, this is not going to matter what type of audit, if it's integrated audit, regular audit, um, right? As long as there's an opinion, no matter what engagement type, as long as there's an opinion being issued, the answer here is going to be the same, just, just as an FYI. So could be an integrated audit question, could be a question in another section, but that's my job uh, to point those out for you. Simply put, right? What am I going to point out here? Well, if we look, right? And again, this applies whenever we're issuing an opinion. If we have, and what do we see here? We saw material weakness, right? We have material weakness, and that material weakness is material. Do we see anything about pervasive? Um, I don't see anything about pervasive, um, but I would say by default, right? If it does not mention anything about it being pervasive, we just assume it is pervasive because generally speaking, right? And that's what comes with practice, listening to me go with these questions. Generally speaking, these questions would say, oh, but it's not pervasive, right? Uh, rather than saying, oh, it is pervasive. So here we can assume that it is pervasive. And again, right, that's not me misleading you with this question. These are AICPA questions, right? That's why these people, that's why everyone finds these uh, so difficult, right? Is because you kind of need to see enough of them to read into them. Because yeah, if they gave you all of the uh, information outright and said, oh, it was pervasive as well, this would be a lot more easy, right? That would just be a lot uh, easier to answer. So, right, we're seeing here it's material and pervasive. Uh, we are going to see as it, it as an adverse opinion. Now, this section here, this side, uh, this talks about the inability to obtain sufficient evidence. I don't see anything about that. I see material weakness exists in the financial statements, right? So, um, I would go with this side and essentially, right, material, pervasive, adverse opinion. Um, so, right, just a couple other points, you know, if there are deficiencies, so again, in individually or in combination that result in one or more material weaknesses as of the date of a specified in management's assertion, then the auditor should express an adverse opinion, right? Unless there's a scope limitation, which has more to do with our uh, evidence, right? Restricting the amount of evidence that we can get, restricting our access to information. So awesome, awesome there. So final answer here is going to be issue an adverse opinion. Take it all in, it is a good time, right? So additionally here, we should also disclose in a separate paragraph with the header, adverse opinion on internal control over financial reporting section. So that's what we would do as well, right? Just kind of building on this full circle. Yes, we'll cover that in our reports and engagement results section, but why not talk about it here, right? So that's, we're also determining the effect the adverse opinion has on the financial statement. So if we say that it's gonna misstate cash, well, then in our report, in the section that titled adverse opinion, we're going to say this material weakness has a significant impact on cash. It's pervasive and cash will be material misstated because of it. Right. So, again, just building a little world building here, here, talking it through with you about, you know, the overall nature of what we're going to see here. Right. Uh, and so when internal control or financial reporting, it's not is not effective you know, because one or more material weaknesses exist. Right, we are going to define what a material weakness is. So, anytime we have a material weakness in any engagement, keep in mind we are in our report, we are going in our basis for the opinion. And again, we can in our lessons about the reports, we will actually go through and talk about the order. Right, we have the basis for opinion, we have the, pay, the, the actual opinion paragraph, you know, emphasis of matter, uh, other matter paragraphs. We have all of those, so don't worry about those yet. But but keep in mind, when we do have a material weakness or a significant deficiency, we are going to define what those are because the readers of the financial statements, you know, maybe they're fortunate they've never read financial statements with material weakness. So we're just going to let them know, hey, this is what a material weakness means. This is what a significant deficiency means. So awesome. Also, uh, if we do have this material weakness, we're going to include a statement that one or more material weaknesses have been identified and an identification of the material weaknesses described in management's assessment about that internal control over financial reporting. So not that you have to take all of that in, right? I just, I just gave you all a big dump of everything, right? So just here to further your knowledge, take it all in, right? I'm gonna be repeating a lot of these 
things I just said throughout the lessons, right? Especially when we get to reports, just want to give you as much information as I can every time I can. As an update, the cat is still sitting on the headrest of my chair. We're still doing all right. Moving on to the next one. In an integrated audit, so <laughs> much more concise than the other one. Awesome. In an integrated audit, what? Are we, is it not required by privately held companies? Is it only required by large public companies? Now, right, just keep in mind, like in theory or just in, I mean, I guess in reality, you could say any type of, uh, any type of entity could get any type of engagement, right? Now, you could be a, a small company, right, making $1,000 a year. You could get an audit, sure. It, would that be practical? Would that make sense? No, uh, but you could. There's nothing stopping you. Here, we're talking about what's required. So an integrated audit, who is required to get that? Well, is it not required by privately held companies? And is it only required by... So like these could be, you know, answers that go hand in hand with each other. And lucky for you, I have a nice little snippet from our lesson here. So take a look, take a read, right? We've got, you know, companies with market caps of more than 75 million. Privately held companies are not required to undergo inter integrated audits, um, right? We must express an opinion. So again, nice opportunity to just... Uh, Take a read again, what we've seen, right? Super important. And, you know, again, just a good opportunity to, to reflect on what we've seen on our lessons. Um, we do have an opinion. Auditors may refer integrated audit as less substantive testing may be required. So remember that audit risk formula. So the final answer is both, right? It's not required by privately held companies, but it is only, and it is only required by large public companies. So awesome, awesome there. An integrated audit is performed under PCAOB standards, which govern public companies. In an integrated audit of a non-issuer, which of the following is the responsibility of an auditor with regard to testing controls at a company with multiple business units? All right, what are we thinking here? Well, I, okay, interesting question. Testing controls over specific risks at business units that are material to the company's consolidated financial statements. So, I mean, taking ourselves out of whatever this is, right? Multiple business units, taking ourselves out, generally speaking, right? We are gonna test things that are material to the financial statements as a great broad general statement, right? We will be testing uh, items, controls, statements, accounts that are all material to the financial statements. So I would say this sounds pretty solid, right? And I will go over the specifics of multiple business units, but this is, you know, by the, uh, I'm taking it with the approach that you might not know what that is really right now. We don't really care. Uh, what about testing controls over all risks? So, okay, over all risks, that's aggressive, right? You know, is there a risk that a uh, minimum wage cashier could steal money out of the cash register? Uh, yeah, totally. I mean, it's very likely, but are we going to test the control there? Well, no, because that's a little ridiculous. You know, if we're auditing McDonald's, we're not going to test every single cash register throughout their entire company. That just does not make sense, right? We're not gonna do that. So we're gonna cross that off. We are testing things that are material to our audit. Testing controls over only certain specified risk at all business units of the company. Um, again, right, so business unit, it could just be uh, geographical, right? It could be uh, the Japan segment, the US segment, the Mexico segment, the Colombia segment, right? So again, it's we're only gonna be testing those materials Accounts, material transactions, and material business units, right? So if we're McDonald's and we just opened up our first store in, store in Brazil, and we only have one store, but we have millions of stores in the US, I'm going to be honest, as an auditor, I'm not going to really care about that one store in Brazil because that is so immaterial, the grand scheme of things. So we're not going to test all business units, right? Because maybe there's a whole business unit that's dedicated, and that's an extreme example, right? Like one specific, just one restaurant. But, you know, if we've got, let's say, okay, like 100 restaurants in Brazil, but we've, again, we still have a million in the US, like 100 restaurants is still so immaterial compared to the ones in the US. So we are only going to test that which is material to the overall consolidated financial statements. And lastly, testing controls over all risks. Again, I don't like that. Uh, that I'm, okay, but it says that are material to the company's consolidated uh, financial statements. Okay, so testing controls over all risks at business units that are material to the company's consolidated financial statements. Interesting, interesting there, right? So what's the difference between A and D? Well, testing controls over 
specific risks and all risks. So that's where we get into the fun minutiae of the exam, right? Uh, so it is not the auditor's responsibility to test all risks. It is the auditor's responsibility to test specific risks because the auditor needs to obtain sufficient evidence to assess the risk that material, material errors or irregularities could occur in the company's financial statements. So uh, again, slight differences, right? Might, it's, it's not might, it will be annoying to see something like this, right? But because this says specific risks, we want to test specific risks, not every single risk, right? So just specific risks that will be material. Which of the following is a complete and accurate list of the walkthrough procedures usually performed in an issuer's integrated audit? All right, so there's a trick here, right? This might just seem like a bunch of blob, right? Like, oh my gosh, what the heck is going on? There's a bunch of these, like, oh, what's the order? I can see, you know, someone getting very intimidated by this, but let's not get intimidated. Let me walk you through it. So watch over the trick here. This question asks about walkthrough procedures. So whenever we're going through a question, think, are we issuer or non-issuer? Which, you know, it does, it mentions issuer, but is that gonna be important? A lot of times not, but you should still keep in mind, right? So issuer, non-issuer, what type of what type of uh, engagement, right? Here, integrated audit, okay, will that be important? You know, ge generally, I say a little bit more important than issuer versus non-issuer, but also, you'd be surprised how often this comes becomes relevant. Which stage of an audit are we in? I'm gonna repeat that one more time. What stage in this engagement are we in? Well, are we, you know, in the testing stage? Are we in the conclusion stage? Are we in the planning stage? Well, it's just walk through procedures, right? Like, again, if, if you didn't have this train of thought, you might be completely blown away. Like, what the heck is going on here? And I, I, again, I wouldn't blame you. So we're thinking we're in the planning stage. So what is done in the planning stage? Well, I'm going to jump around because that's what I like to do. Uh, sampling, I see sampling. Sampling is not done in the planning stage. So I'm going to cross that off, right? Test the controls. That is that is not that is not done in the in the uh, the planning stage, right? Uh, what else? Inquiry, observation, inspection of relevant documentation, reperformance, uh, inquiry, inspection of okay, sampling, reperformance of controls. So again, going to cross this off here. Now you might say, oh Nick, like aren't inquiry and observation and these kinds of things done in the testing stage? Well, yes, they are, right? So this question is not specific to just integrated audits. It applies to normal audits and other engagements as well. So these are, you could call these as, um, you know, a form of analytical procedure. And we know that analytical procedures are performed during the planning stage, just like walkthrough procedures. So walkthrough procedures, that's where you, um, you know, to get an understanding of a company, right? It's the first time, maybe it's the first time you're auditing them, or you just want to get an idea of, you know, what they do, right? How they operate. So you start off, you say, okay, so you uh, make a sale to a customer, right? The customer walks in the store, you know, you, you observe that, right? Then the customer purchases something, then you inspect the receipt that is generated, you inspect the, the invoice, you inspect whatever documentation is generated, you reperform the control, right? Maybe you go in and you test buy uh, something from the company, you inquire a customer, you inquire the, the employees. So these are all done during walkthroughs. Again, testing of controls, sampling, and again, sampling, reperformance, a lot of these, th not reperformance, these are all gonna be done during the testing stage. The key here is that all of these are done during our planning stage, right? So right here, the audit walkthrough, Final answer here is going to be letter B. Lots of tricks here, but you knew that coming into the audit exam, it's a fun wild time, right? Uh, never a dull moment, but we will get you through this and I hopefully will get through it as well. Uh, the cat is currently getting more and more comfortable sitting on the top of my chair, so uh, I cannot move. So I guess my only goal is to keep recording more videos until eventually she moves. So I will deal with that. You deal with your studying and I'll see you in the next one. Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material? We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because 
Who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.